<laughs> Hi, nice to see you, everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for this invitation. I give us a great pleasure to be able to talk about uh, this event, even in if online. Uh, my colleague is uh, Papadopoulou Coralia, is my uh, very good colleague and, uh, and human kinesiologist uh, and uh, sports science assistant in our uh, academy. Uh, my name is Ondar Sobo. Uh, I'm a director for, for the science part uh, in, in this academy and uh, the Hungarian National Federation for the Kayak and Canoe. Uh, our topic is simple yet, uh, much more complicated, uh, the past, present and future success of uh, the Hungarian kayaking sport uh, and the most successful sport of Hungarian elite uh, sports. Okay. Um, Can you click? <laughs> Two. <laughs> You're, you're not going to be allowed to press it, I guess. So should we just say it every time if it's the next slide or? Uh, okay, one more, please. Thank you. The answer to everything is complex because uh, the simplicity shows that if uh, we look at the Olympic history books, results, world uh, events, uh, where the successes uh, are about Hungary, uh, for almost the cities. What can be behind these successes? I think our PPT has come back. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We see now the historical pictures and uh, and and uh, our name asked for our academy. Okay. Well, we win the 40 gold medal uh, from the Summer Olympic Games. Uh, statically, Hungarian competitors has a night, uh, 30 uh, percent chance of winning a gold medal, uh, where there is a maybe 50 percent chance of winning a medal in the Olympic uh, Summer Games. The three most successful Olympic sports in Hungary, along with uh, water polo and uh, fencing. Kovács Katalin, our name ask, uh, is the most uh, famous athlete uh, the history of Olympic Games in Hungary for the women athletes. The dreamer uh, and the founder of our academies in Hungary. Uh, she won the three Olympic championship, uh, 31 world championship, uh, 29 European Championship. Two times for was uh, the athletes of the year in Hungary, and etc. <laughs> One more piece. Thank you. The arts politic for Catalin is building on the success of the past, seizing, uh, seizing uh, the opportunities of the present for the future generation. Uh, now our uh, country, uh, we look now what is uh, the 188 total medals uh, in 22. Uh, our region for the sport is uh, very big and uh, and near the lakes and the rivers 
uh, our basis is very, very impressive and uh, good working there uh, because this lot of uh, international medals is uh, the result for, for the good uh, trainers and, uh, and athletes' cooperation. Okay, one slide please more. Okay. Uh, in 22, uh, there were 4,249 competitors in Hungarian kayaking, explaining masters and dragon boat disciplines, uh, following distribution. Our facility in the National Kayak uh, Academy uh, fitted uh, uh, 21 near the lake uh, Venice. This is a center, central of uh, our country. In 23, the uh, number of uh, members around 180, number of uh, racing licenses 124. In January, pre-academy age groups uh, around 100 uh, 120 people. Academy age group around 60 people. Number of sports coaches was uh, 14. And every year we develop a little bit and uh, now 16. Sports science and fitness team uh, without the medical teams is uh, six person. And uh, our medical staff is more four or five uh, doctors and and the other parts. You can maybe move forward for us if you could. You heard? Okay. Thank you. And more, more, please. more, more, more too. Thank you. Okay. This is our statistic for the national. Uh, results. Okay. Um, it was the youth, adult, and the young, and under 23 ages for uh, our teams. You could press one. We win. We win four European games winning a uh, gold medal and and 28 uh, medals for a lot of uh, European Championship and uh, World Championship and Marathon Championship, uh, World Championship, European Championship and Olympic Hope Regatta. Our facility is the most impressive in Hungary. Our government and the federation and uh, uh, and our vision is manifest now uh, near the lake uh, Venice. We have the buildings for multi sports. Uh, for the climbings, for the ski rollers, and tennis and other uh, sports, diff uh, different sports, uh, uh, and normally the kayak and canoe sport facilities there. We have the apartment, a lot of apartments, and one uh, altitude center also. And we work here with five uh, different uh, sports science laboratories. The vision of uh, the academy is uh, the optimized development and education of as many athletes as poss possible. 
with an uh, infrastructure, infrastructure where our LTAD model can be released, the multi-sport approach and the late sports specialization. I think this is our mojo. <laughs> Uh, this also prevents the athletes from prematurely dropping out and uh, overextending themselves. The academies have to, to entire kayak canoe community and for the federation and a lot of athletes all around the world. Our goals, the vision is uh, create a methodological center where sports science is based on measurable results. Uh, the goal and the target is uh, the test system, the test battery, preventive uh, performance and uh, facilities, programs and performance managing. Education is a top athlete's uh, successful long-term competition. This helping for understand what is our physiology. Uh, uh, physiology. Okay, performance manage management and structures. Perform, uh, we have uh, management, diagnostics, monitoring, profiles, competitor profiles, athletes profiles, and operative work and feedback uh, with our performance coaches. Our competence, the pillars of uh, the structure are compliance uh, with the six comp uh, competencies, communication pedagogy, uh, and pedagogy. Professionals uh, with a, uh, appropriate uh, professional qualifications and appropriate human qualities can work in all fields. Areas of expertise, uh, dietetics, uh, physical therapy, uh, physiotherapists, uh, masters, uh, doctors, uh, psychology, uh, human kinesiology, sociology, and the fitness coach, and the, the sport, uh, kayak and sport coaches. My task is uh, to coordinate the specialist, uh, the specialist uh, of the various fields to help uh, the existing communication between uh, them and to shape uh, the everyday work for the sake of the future image. To create, implement and, and uh, carry out uh, scientific research and conducting and uh, conducting the, the lectures conferences, publications, and our very good researches. Pillars of uh, sports science and the data, performance data, data record, uh, recording, processing, and data storage, data handling, and conclusions with my colleagues and uh, and uh, make good communication channels uh, for uh, for the others coach. Okay. So, um, okay, we have the crazy slide. Um, so our major plan is to make a difference when it comes to kind of kayak and canoe kind of sporting because. Um, in Hungary, it's, as he previously mentioned, one of the most successful sports. However, at the same time, um, it's probably the first few years where they started to put so much effort into it. So now, finally, we are able to provide these athletes a scientific background 
and uh, we can invest into researching and supporting them not only through trainings but with test batteries and protocols. Um, mostly I take part of it uh, in the past one year as much as I can and we're still growing and improving. And we have a few test batteries and protocols that have been working. They are usually depending, uh, the frequency of it is depending on the type of the test or uh, the, which part of the season it is, uh, gender, age, period of the uh, competitions, um, also how experienced the chosen athletes are and the level of competition for them. So for example, we have fixed um, protocols that we do three to four times a year. And uh, however, we have uh, a few that we do yearly and there are some that we do uh, once or twice a week. I'm gonna get into it uh, within the next slide if you can please press it for me. <laughs> yes, so just to see um, on what level our athletes are, usually we start off um, if they are not children anymore, but they are not teenagers at that uh, young age, we try to um, follow up as they grow up um, and see if they're going to grow into sports specifically to the type of athlete that we need for a kayak or a canoe athlete. So we do anthropometric and uh, body composition tests, first of all. And then these tests that I mentioned under it, for example, the core test or squat screen and one leg box uh, squat, these are just a few examples that we do as like a quick and easy test just um, to see for example, before training, in what uh, condition they come to. And these are follow-up uh, tests that we can just uh, always do regardless of equipment or like we don't need the whole uh, scientific laboratory for it. So this is mostly for the youth. And if you move forward for me, please. Then um, the most important test that we can do um, when they don't have water training is something that is actually supporting water training and these are the exercise physiology tests. Um, we do have uh, ergometric tests uh, through kayak or canoe ergometers. Uh, we have, as Andras mentioned, the scientific laboratory and that's where we have um, these equipments as well. Depending on how experienced they are um, and what type of um, pressure they can <laughs> bear. Uh, we do lactate testing with a stair test. So basically we put them on the ergometer and then for three minutes starting at 40 watts, they have to grow. And uh, after three minutes, they stop for one minute. And then after the one minute, they go for another three. This goes on until they can't do it anymore properly or they can't hold on the watts, which are usually increasing uh, 20 per stair. And um, the frequency for this test is at least two times a year. So once before competitions and once when the competition season is done. So basically we do spring and fall. Um, and we combine this as well with a VO2 max testing. Our most important pillars for this is to do cardio with resistance that is going to simulate what they will do at water work and to test the peak oxygen consumption, heart rate uh, aligned with blood lactate and the increasement of the lactate. Uh, we want to improve their techniques. So sometimes when they can't have water training, this helps a lot. Uh, and also uh, its goal is to determine the anaerobe and aerobe zones for uh, um, the, the athletes. And not only them, but it's a perfect feedback for the coaches because we can give them more specific and personalized um, training suggestions or for example, how long the deduction time should be after a race or even after like a hard training, we can determine pose zones and um, the lactate tolerance individually. For example, if it's not one person rowing at a race, but we have the K2 or uh, K4 where it's more people sitting in one boat, uh, it's very important for them to know that everybody's tolerance is different. So that's also a very um, important part of how we choose uh, our athletes and who should sit where and which athlete is with uh, which athlete um, perfectly matching. So we can also like 
sort out the differences. And um, if you can press one more, I think I, yes. Um, these are the reports that we get from the, uh, the ergometric tests. Uh, it's in German. So I, it's just basically a picture just so you would see it that once uh, we manually write down everything that's going on during the test, we put it into our software and then it's uh, creating this whole report. And uh, basically on the report, we're just going to see what I previously mentioned, the locked at uh, edges, and uh, we can see specifically all the three minutes and how the heart rate was changing along with the lactate acid. And uh, the next slide, I think, is also connected to it where we can see uh, how the uh, aerobe and anaerobe zones are uh, identified. And then basically we send out a form like this to the coaches for feedback and through this they can get a suggest suggestion. It's depending on them if they follow it, but um, what we would uh, suggest for them is like uh, between what pools zones they should train their um, athletes and watch how the lactate um, curve goes up which is on the next slide because this is the lactate curve that we get from the ergometric uh, trainings and if we go back years and years then we can always uh, just um, compare these curves because every athlete has uh, the data uh, pre-saved everything is globally in one software collected so we can just even see that during the years or even if uh, it's at, after off season or before competition if it's changing how we want it to. So that's about the ergometric uh, testing. And if we go further down, thank you so much. <laughs> then another huge important part of the academy is that we not only work with the athletes who specifically work as an athlete and do it as a professional level. However, we are now finally be able to say that we are part of the sports school system. And... Um, we're going to talk about that very soon. And we will tell you a few information, but then just the tests individually. Um, these are very simple. And of course, because it's we're talking about kids who are just starting to figure out if they want to do kayaking and canoeing, we, our most important goal is to make them like the sport and just be loyal to it. So I think that's one of the hardest uh, parts. But um, now that uh, we have um, specialized coaches who take part with the PE teachers, uh, it's, uh, it's a very successful cooperation. So we do two, three times a year these tests. We do it fall and spring. And then uh, in between for the kids who are chosen, we do separate tests. And the classes start from first grade. So that's here, the age between six and seven. And there are more than 100 participants. Uh, we work with two elementary schools, which are close to our academy in the same area because they train in our facility at the, the previously mentioned Venice Lake. So there are only a five tests. Basically, we do sprints uh, with 5, 10, 15 um, meters. And then there are photo cells who are, um, which are giving us information of how fast these meters were reached. We do an easy long jump for them from standing. They have to keep up the plank. We do push-ups. Uh, and for example, with the plank and the push-ups, it's not about uh, quality, uh, quantity, but it's uh, only about quality. And we do all these to check their agility and relative strength, uh, just see how fine movements are for them the coordination and in general, if they are physically even able to um, have a future on the long run, if not in kayak, then in general and in sports. So it's more like a talent and the skill um, recruiting <laughs> test. And um, I don't know if you want to Yes, yes, yes. A uh, sports school uh, model is uh, very new in Hungary. Uh, we created two years ago this uh, project. We started with this project uh, two years ago. A cooperation where daily uh, training and uh, the sport of kayak and uh, canoeing appear in the institutions. 
we have developed a special test system. Uh, this represented uh, by Cora. Uh, we developed children uh, from the age of uh, six in the framework of uh, water activities uh, once a week. Uh, uh, for the uh, for the test system, the significantly different fitness level of uh, the children attending the sport class. Uh, these are uh, the normal classes. Is uh, become vis uh, visible, visible, uh, excellent result and uh, progress. Uh, which we can easily uh, communication to parents and uh, with the school and the teachers also. Um, so, and just as an extra information, yeah, that's basically just so you would see it. This is, for example, where I collect all the data once I do the measurements, and then this is just for example, the previous two measurements, but as we go further in time, it's just going to be a, a lot of diagrams, and uh, this is just our statistics, but for the parents also and the coaches, it's just very important that they see from uh, um, six months to another six months period uh, if there was any development, because of course, um, for us to have a huge background of uh, young people who will do great in kayak, we have to do this and do the selection through it. So that's basically just the data for it. And um, I don't know if there was something on the slide before. If you, okay, never mind. This is fine too. I think I already said that just so you see that, yeah, it's a talent selection. So you can go, yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing at the academy, it's for athletes who are already part of our academy and they even uh, go to competitions, um, we have a readiness test for them. It's uh, once a week. We do it at the same time every Monday uh, before a gym session, after a rest day, just so we would see at what state they are in a relaxing state with the day off and no load. The goal is to measure the load potential and uh, to supervise standby state. Um, we do an easy counter movement jump and we are mixing it with clamping force uh, tests. We are looking for asymmetries and uh, checking what's the dominant hand. And we are aligning this with uh, wellness questionnaires as um, they are sent out every week to the athletes it's, uh, themselves. It's just a very easy questionnaire which is giving us um, subjective opinion of how they are feeling because uh, if we truly believe that if physically somebody is not okay, the background could be the mental lack of uh, health. So we're really paying attention, especially that these kids are mostly in school, so that they have another uh, extra pressure on their shoulder. And... Um, we align this whole readiness test with a constant body temperature monitoring with the core that there are children that have to use it. And uh, I collect all this data, I put it into um, one software and I'm just basically giving feedback to the medical staff, um, the athletes themselves, but mostly the coaches. So they would see how to start a week, what type of um, personalized or individual trainings to set up for them. And uh, at the next slide, I'm just going to continue. Because part of the monitoring is uh, that we started uh, uh, working with WHOOPS. I don't know if uh, you know about it, but it's, uh, it's a monitoring uh, gadget, which is basically 24-7 variable, even for training, showering, sleeping, everything. And through that, we can have an insight into their sleep performance, their strain recovery, and all over general health. Um, we pre-selected athletes and uh, groups that were eligible for this, and they are uh, meeting the criteria because um, the weekly reports and the monthly reports are extremely important, especially during competitions. Um, 
but how you should imagine it is that um, through that we can see how they eat, how much they move, how their recovery is after one certain training or during competition, how much they are stressing. So all this 24-hour um, monitoring is just helping us to make sure that there is enough uh, workouts or maybe if uh, there is any fatigue or they are overtrained. So I think on the next slide, I wrote some yes uh, details about it so uh, the measurement itself is based on hrv and gps data and uh, we can just uh, align this as well with the wellness questionnaires also we pay attention to the, the women's cycle and how to um, make sure that uh, proper workouts are fitting their um, cycle and we can just uh, determine the appropriate workout load. And on top of that, we have two profiles, only one team can see itself, so there's no competition, so it's uh, nobody can see the other person and it's basically me seeing everybody. So I just collect this data too and as time goes on, hopefully we're going to have a huge database looking back and uh, through this, it's very important that we can usually see if somebody is overtrained or is about to get sick. So we can just um, warn the coach to give them a day off or let them rest or have a lighter workout and it's been working so far. So I think that's a huge help that we are able to use this gadget. And the next thing when it comes to the scientific background, we do blood tests. This is mostly with the national team and um, we check, of course, during training before, after. I think everybody's familiar with this part in sports that we check the lactate and um, when it's... Uh, the competition time, we align this as well with uh, what we saw at the ergometric uh, lactate uh, curve and how long the deduction should be. So that's what is most important for. But the other new thing that we did in the past uh, one year, twice a week, is that we started measuring creatine kinase uh, in, the, in the blood. It's uh, two times a week because once we do it on a Tuesday, and then it has to be 96 hours after when we do the second, so we would see the peak um number of the creatine kinase with this we were able to control fatigue and uh, check if they are um, overloaded or maybe if they should rest now that we have the whoop it's uh, amazing to see how they are aligning together and um, so whenever the recovery was low or, the, or they had a strong week we would see it in whoop and then we could just check the blood measurements as well which is a very fast way to see it. So as well, again, here, if anybody was about to be sick, we could already just take care of it and not having to wait and until they are actually sick and take days off. And uh, with this, we can just uh, also communicate with the coaches. And this is everything that I was going to say about this. <laughs> and the next one is... I think it's back yeah, to my yeah. The biggest difference uh, comes from indoor uh, physical training. Here we do not uh, develop endurance, uh, only the movement patterns and the strength uh, are what are being developed. Everything else can be done on the water, running or cycling. And we do everything uh, for the sake of uh, the transfer back. Uh, we develop uh, with the most uh, modern tools, uh, gadgets and methods possible. Uh, with the help of uh, nutritionists, uh, physical therapists, uh, human kinesiologist, master, etc. It's very important. It is uh, very important also uh, that the order over uh, 17 uh, competitors already leave their uh, everyday leaves under a serious monitoring system. Uh, this also helps uh, them uh, to become uh, professional athletes and uh, the same time successful. Okay, uh, our structure, uh, core, uh, our pillars uh, and the baseline, uh, base uh, 
for for our strength uh, training is uh, the core pressing and the movement patterns are primary considerations hyper uh, after this part uh, hypertrophy uh, strength explosive power uh, is the next uh, level uh, the goal is uh, to maintain maximum strength uh, throughout uh, the year and uh, guard this uh, uh, this maximal strength is very, very important. Uh, support uh, for the water work with the best possible transfer effects. Our method is uh, uh, um, before the, the season, very long period. This is a linear periodization. Uh, our choice is the linear periodization uh, with a competitive uh, uh, method when uh, the season is coming. Uh, the good part for uh, this linear periodization is we can develop a foundation within a mesocycle uh, one or more capacities uh, can be developed at the same time, complex effects. Uh, hypertrophy, strength, explosiveness, or power, and regeneration is a part. Opposite path uh, of volume and intensity, progressive change required. And tri period, anatomical adaptation, uh, strength development, maximal strength development, and explosiveness or powers and peak powers. If a method is uh, applied at the wrong time, it is uh, at uh, the expense of adaptation. Uh, the concurrent or competitive model during the competition, uh, there is uh, no time just for complex development. Uh, during the championship, uh, Instead uh, of hypertrophy, uh, the goal is uh, to develop and maintain maximum strength and explosiveness or powers. Principles, we never work until we drop, uh, keep fuel in the tank, and the training should be repetable. The significant part of training must be made, uh, made uh, measurable. Uh, it's very big help, uh, Corelia and uh, the other colleagues uh, in the academy and the federation. We know when the competitors arrive uh, and in what state of readiness, uh, what are the external and uh, circumstance and environmental influences. Uh, Velocity-based uh, system we use a uh, lot of methodology and uh, gadgets, uh, velocity-based training, uh, the full uh, the roams. Uh, we measure uh, before uh, the training, after the training, and every weeks uh, or uh, or two times uh, uh, per week. Also, power peak. Uh, use of uh, innovative uh, innovative uh, tools. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, inertial machines, technologies supporting uh, for the regeneration is also very, very important part of our job. Okay, uh, because of the shortness of time, that's all we present about today. We hope you enjoyed uh, our presentation and was informative for you. Uh, feel free to contact uh, me by, by email with any questions. And thank you so much one more time uh, for your host and invitation for this sport platform. Thank you very much, uh, Coralia and Andres. We, we enjoyed your presentation a lot. Uh, there are questions from the audience. And the first one is, uh, 
while you are testing so much, are those tests free for the athletes that are enrolled in your system or do athletes pay for them? They are enrolled in our system. So basically, if somebody is already uh, a selected and already assigned uh, academic athletes, then this is why we provide it to them. So in general, there are many, many teams in Hungary and you should look at it as if we would be one. So whoever is part of our academy is given this as a help and they don't have to pay for it because it's part of what we give for them once they are already signing the contract to be our athlete. All right. Uh, do you have a common database for the whole country? Um, we do, but it's um, due to what I said at the beginning that this sport is basically just about to open its wings <laughs> um, in this part. There was not really any uh, effort as from research uh, behind it so far. So it is, but at the same time, it's not a database that we could use properly yet. So we're still trying to figure out what would be the right way to collect all that and uh, turn into it. Uh, turn it into something that uh, would be useful for us because right now it's just a lot of data but uh, it's a lot of um, gaps in it and missing information so <laughs> this is one of our new projects as well to put it all together and have a proper database that for the future would be a very good referral because we don't have any referrals from the past <laughs> all right all right then the next question Yes, here. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, well, you mentioned that you have uh, numerous kind of uh, recovery methods that you use. Uh, what are those methods that you have chosen to use? Um, we have, um, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but like ice chambers or like the cabins where you go inside. Um, obviously, under minus degrees, we have Normatex. We do. Um, special bath therapies, we have um, um, physiotherapists, we do laser therapy, magnet therapy, um, wavelength therapies, we have ultrasound therapies. So basically, um, I think in the first round it's this. Mostly. Yeah, we use, we, we use a lot of uh, gadgets and a uh, and, uh, lot of uh, specialists for, for this part uh, because uh, when uh, the competitions arrive, uh, these guys, these athletes, uh, make uh, high, high peak uh, performance two times per day, and uh, the the regeneration is the most important. I think we build uh, this regeneration skill for for our athletes. Uh, when uh, we make this long, long period for the preparation. Uh, and we use the nutrition, nutritionist uh, uh, cancer, uh, cancers and uh, the hydration and and we measure the, the not the, only the lactates, uh, the blood sugar, uh, glucose and and uh, a lot of part also. Yeah, so we combine the physiological uh, numbers along with the, the level of fatigue and then we choose what type of uh, recovery um, session we will have for them. But what I said at the beginning, for now, these are what we have. It's a solid seven options. But of course, it's also very depending on the individual and what the coach wants. and. We want them to have more options than just a regular ice bath. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, we have a continuing question on on cold therapy. So, do you use cold water immersion or cryotherapy? Sorry, yeah. you were asking if we use the water or we do cryotherapy. Yes, if you use uh, cold water immersion or cryotherapy. Cryotherapy also, yeah. 
Yeah. All right. We have the uh, portable uh, cryo and uh, the cryo sauna also. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, the bath, we only basically use it once they come off after a race and they go straight into the bath. And then within three hours, they have a second race. So for that, we did use the bath. But in like general recovery, we use the cabins because it's... Our pros athletes... Uh, use uh, also the hyperbar car, uh, chambers also all right yeah. interesting well there's the another question know. from the audience <laughs> can you give some examples how you can boost transfer effect of strength training to water performance mm -hmm. So basically, I'm just going to translate, we don't give them um, a huge load of mechanical stress and when we do the gym workouts, then we emphasize. <laughs> So <laughs> we, mm, I, I don't know if I got the question right. Could you repeat it, please? Because what we are saying right now is basically that we uh, take care of the first part, as I said, and we combine that with the fact that we pay attention to their cardiovascular um, well-being. But I don't think that's what we heard. So could you repeat it again, please? Yep. So the question was... Can you give some examples to how you can boost the transfer effect of strength training to water performance? So, um, we basically just started now that it's uh, it was off-season and we started uh, strong as well right now with the... Um, the maximum strength trainings and developing strength and for that for example we do transfers. these transfer um, movements and uh, the whole gym session is basically based around transferring all that into um, the water work and so for example we do Eccentric, eccentric uh, workout um, sessions and uh, so if, if it's about strength, if it's about velocity, then we do concentric and it's uh, usually that we don't uh, overstress the athletes with uh, huge weights or we rather do uh, small rep numbers but with uh, bigger weights but uh, we slowly build it up and we have um, three and four weeks of cycles and depending on that we can move it to water work but for example are the most important is that we strengthen the cores and the hips because it's something that in this sport would be very important as uh, we would transfer that to water work so once they row they can slide uh, on longer meters at the water so that's one of the most important things that we try to transfer from uh, the gym workouts to water and also the rotational movements which is connected to the core that i said before so i don't know if you want specifically to tell us what type of movements we do in the gym as example or just in general if this answered any doubt 